Do do di. It's Nandi. Hello, friends. I'm doing a quick video covering the most relevant stuff in the patch notes that have just been announced today. There is a lot of stuff in there, but I'm going to just focus on the key bits for you to take away. I'll walk you quickly through the important dates for this patch, and then spend a bit more time on the bigger changes that have come to Guild War, as well as Phase 1 of the Requisition rework. There is also the new Snowprint ID to touch on too. I've come to learn that each 5 week cycle of the game is known as a live ops cycle, and broadly repeats the same pattern and timing of events. On this slide, you'll see the important dates summarised. We have a new character, Barakil, releasing via a two-week hero release event that starts on June 30th. He will be the fourth Dark Angels character to join the faction, and I'll cover him and his release closer to the time. Following on from that will be the start of a new Guild War season and a new incursion event. For this live ops cycle, our legendary release event is for Ragnar Blackmane. This will be Ragnar's final legendary release event, so make sure to unlock him and if you're looking for specific tips and insights into which characters to build for the event, check out my video on the topic linked in the video description below. There are also two character quests as usual. The first of those is on Azkor, the Exalted 8 bound, and you'll be able to bring Chaos units as allies when you attempt the quest on July 3rd. The second quest is for Sword Brother Godswill on July 24th with Imperial allies. In terms of tournament arena, we have a power up and a conquest tournament arena, and in both of these, we will be able to field the new Machines of War. For Guild War, the changes or updates are divided into two groups. There's a nice bit of UI development that makes managing and tracking Guild War easier. Now, when you go to the Guild War score tracker in the top left, you can see a few things. You get this defense power up thing on the top right which tells you how much remaining power each team has on defense. You can also see per player how many characters they can still deploy and how many tokens they have left. After I go through one battle, you can come back to the screen and see how this number changes. I now have 70 potential characters left to use and the ticket counter goes down to 9. I'm pretty happy with these UI changes and I think this will make wars more engaging due to being able to track progress and activity more easily. The next bit is the changes to the rarity caps and what this means for each player. There is a naming convention that Snowprint uses to describe different buildings in Guild Wars. One skull is called Trooper, two skulls is Veteran, three skulls is Elite, and four skulls is Hero. You can see how the number of skulls per building changes depending on which battlefield level you're currently fighting on. I've worked with Tacticus Ambassador Aarons to come up with a current list. First, you can see the building names for every battlefield level. On this slide, you can see how all of these changes with the updates in this patch, and at the bottom we have made a summary for you to take away. At the top end, Battlefield 5, there are 12 less legendary slots across the board, and these are replaced by epic slots, effectively reducing the overall cap at Battlefield 5. At Battlefield 1 on the bottom end, the battlefield is now capped out at rare buildings. It's basically a flattening of the curve towards lower rarities, so there should be less overall stomps or massively one-sided battles at each battlefield level. It might also encourage some guilds to move up in battlefield level if they think that they don't have to face as many tough enemies, so it'll be interesting to see how guilds and the player base react to this change. Battlefield 1 essentially now has a rare cap, and Battlefield 2 essentially has an epic cap. I think that the battlefields now are more clearly defined for the goals and progression of players. Battlefield 1 for a silver cap for players and guilds who are building their campaign characters. Battlefield 2 for a gold 1 cap for players and guilds making their first forays into guild raids. And then Battlefield 3 upwards as you start to get your diamond characters. The next thing to talk about briefly is the Snowprint ID. I don't have the full details on this one yet, but it appears that there will be a way to create and store progress on your account between platforms. This is pretty good and helps if you're running the game on different devices. When I've seen this sort of thing happen in other games, it has inevitably led to a secondary market when it comes to owning accounts. I'm not condoning it, and I'm pretty sure if you get caught, you'll get your account suspended, but I can't bury my head in the sand on the topic either. It will be interesting as well to see what other things that this Snowprint ID leads to. 
Will this be the first steps behind being able to extract data about your account onto your phone or desktop? I personally love if we could extract straight into something like Tacticus Planner app or something similar where I can look and plan with my roster. Finally, phase one of the requisition rework. What we see with this initial phase is basically summarized here on screen. Even if you're a veteran player who's opened several requisitions before, everyone starts off at zero and there is no retrospective earning of points or progress. As you open requisitions, you make progress on this ladder and eventually are able to unlock characters and earn ascension orbs. We haven't been given any information if there will be new characters or a rotation type system for this milestone reward ladder, so we'll just take it at face value for now. Let's take a look at the numbers. Bear in mind that phase one is targeted at new players, not existing ones, and the math that I will show you reflects that. The requisitions that you can earn as a player fall into two categories. There are either fixed or finite rewards, and then there is another pool that occurs every five week live ops cycle. For the fixed or finite rewards, you get one requisition for leveling up, you get one requisition for three starring all of the missions in a campaign chapter, you also unlock a 24 hour timed mission after beating each campaign boss. You also get another requisition for leveling up in your general missions. Then there are also the 10 free requisitions that are gifted to you for reaching level 7 in the tutorial of the game. In terms of recurring rewards, you get one for reaching 250 points in Tournament Arena. There are two Tournament Arenas every Live Ops season, so there is an opportunity to earn two total here, provided you play and reach the final chest in both TA. You also get one from your end of season war chest, regardless of how well you perform. There is a further requisition to be earned from the Hero Release Event bonus mission, assuming again that you can complete all the previous 20 missions in order to unlock this bonus mission. Then you get a further 3 from the free section of the battle pass. So all in, up to 7 requisitions per live ops season, provided you're engaged and can hit those milestone rewards. We'll keep working from there. A small poll suggests that a player needs to be roughly level 50 in order to get through all of the above missions, mirror campaigns and elite campaigns. That progress, depending on your guild, can take you as a free to play player between a year and a year and a half. Let's assume that it takes you a year. 50 weeks is 10 live ops cycles and lets you get 10 by 6 recurring requisitions. 50 weeks is 10 live ops cycles and therefore lets you get 10 by 7 recurring requisitions for a total of 70. So after a year of playing the game as a free to play player, where does that leave you on this ladder of progress? We total up the requisitions and you get about 320 by completing all of the above unlocking you Azrael, Rask, Eldrion, Revas, 100 Rockbone Shards, 10 Uncommon Orbs, and 10 Rare Orbs. This is all completely free to play within a year of playing the game, but doesn't include other free requisitions that you might get through free codes or special events, which can add more requisitions to the total. It's more than you would have had prior to the rework, but I suppose the question you have to ask yourself is whether after a year of playing as a free to play player, you would be happy with these extra rewards. The answer is probably going to be different depending on who you ask. Is it everything I wanted to see in a complete overhaul of the requisition system? No, but it's more free stuff, which is always great. What I did learn by doing the math is that there are a reasonable number of requisitions to be earned by simply playing the game, and I didn't realize quite how many there were in the free to play track. I'm excited to see what comes in phase two onwards of the requisition reworks, which will hopefully be targeted at more experienced and veteran players. That's all I've got for now, hopefully short enough to cover the most important parts of the new patch. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. As always, if you are a newer player who hasn't yet used their referral code, I'd love if you could enter mine on screen. It earns you 100 Blackstone and supports me in the work that I do. It is single use though, so choose who you support carefully. Bye for now. Do do dee. It's Nandi.